this is an idea that I think I mentioned just sort of as a passing comment um, when we're looking at the sum of a GP. Okay, um, so let's revise that. Let's remember you got a geometric series, you got a common ratio. What is the sum of the first n terms? Can we remember it? It's the fraction of the. Yeah, we start with the first term, right? And then we, um, we multiplied by the ratio. We multiplied the whole series by the ratio, and then we subtracted it. So we got um, two different versions of this. Do you remember? Um, this one, that's one fraction, which is, that's actually the same as if we reverse the numerator and the denominator. Okay? All right, now, um, I sort of alluded, but I didn't really go into the, um, uh, the fact that if... You take a ratio that's that's smaller than one, right? So we've been thinking about oh, if if ratios get bigger, like say if the common ratio is two. Sorry, not if the ratios get bigger, if the terms get bigger, this thing will just spiral off and get huge, right? And the more terms you take, the bigger it gets. Okay. But if we pick some ratio that's smaller than one, like say a half, and we talked about the frog, right? That this, even though it has an infinite set of uh, terms, the actual sum, if we took it, is a finite thing, which is strange. Um, infinite objects add up to a finite um, actual value. Okay? So how, how do we work that out? Um, let's think about, let's imagine, if I actually can take um, the sum of not the first n terms, but all of the terms. How would you write that? Hmm. Uh, I suppose you could probably um, say the sum to infinity, right? Um, so some people, you'll sometimes see this notation, um, but that's it's kind of weird because infinity is not really a number, and the maths that we have for dealing with infinities, plural, because there are different kinds of infinities, uh, it's not very well developed, especially in the figure. So when you see just an S on its own, without any number down here, okay, that's actually taking the sum of all the terms. Okay, all the terms. Now, let's just consider... Um, what happens when R, this common ratio, is smaller than 1? Hmm. So I'm, I'm trying to work this out. So I'm going to come over here for a second. If the ratio is less than 1, okay, and I suppose I should probably also say it's greater than negative 1 because ratios can be negative, right? Like I could have a ratio of minus 5, and that would go, you know, 1 minus 5 plus 25 minus 125. You get the idea. It still follows the same rules as a normal suit. Okay. So I'll have this boundary. Uh, sometimes you'll see that written as the absolute value of R is less than 1. Can you see how they're actually the same thing? Okay, because the absolute value just says make it positive. All right, if that's the condition we're putting on R, what happens to this guy, R to the M? Uh, and we're considering, actually I'm going to introduce, we're considering as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, rather than saying as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, we have language actually from calculus to talk about when things get insanely big, right? We call them limits. So what limit should I take? As, as n gets really, really big, so that's n to infinity, right? What happens to this r to the n if r is between these boundaries. Well, just as an example, right? Suppose we took this value r, r is a half, right? Well, it's going to get, sorry, that's a, that's a smaller and smaller and smaller, right? In fact, as n approaches infinity, what does this thing approach? It approaches zero, doesn't it? Gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, now, a half, that gets small, sorry, over here, that gets small pretty quick, doesn't it? Okay? But if you take something that's even quite close to 1, like say 99 over 100, okay, it's close to 1. But because it's still smaller than 1 every time you multiply, and if I'm doing it off to infinity, right, it's still actually going to be equal to 0. Is that okay? Are we content with this idea? It's weird, um, because we're not actually getting to infinity, but the idea that it gets smaller and smaller and smaller is the important part. Okay? Therefore, um, what's happening to this sum over here? Here's one of the cases where I'm going to go for the right hand side. What happens to r to the n, sorry, this r to the n, as n approaches infinity it becomes zero. So I don't have to worry about it, right? Does that make sense? Uh, it becomes so inconsequentially small that I can forget about it. So therefore I'm left with a times 1, which is just a, right? 
divided by 1 minus r. Now that r doesn't disappear, right, because it's just one of them. So that'll be 1 minus a half, or 1 minus 99 over 100, or whatever, okay? So, so this, this is what we call the limiting sum, okay? That if you've got this condition here, your ratios in between negative 1 and 1, this is what the whole thing will approach, okay? Now, um, I told you before that like integration, um, this topic explains some results that you learned a long time ago, um, but we didn't have the equipment to explain why. So, here's what I'm going to take. Um, I'm going to give you a decimal, and I want you to give me um, a fraction that actually expresses that decimal. Okay, so let's start off easy. What's that equal to? That's a quarter, right? What about, say, um, let's go for 0 0.2. What's that equal to? Okay. Now, if I were to give you 0 0.3 and make it a repeater, okay? So this is 13, 3, 3, 3, and I'm going to run forever. What fraction is that equal to? Third, right? Now, hold on a second. These, these we understand, but, but why is this the case? Why can't it go on forever? And you know, other examples, right? This is not the only one. Uh, if I say 0 0.1, what's that equal to? 1, one over 9, okay? And you could verify this in your calculator. Let's go, let's go another step further. What about, say, 0 0.15 repeater? So, 1, 5, 1, 5, 1, 5, 1, 5. Does anyone remember? This is year 7. This is a, what do we call these? These have a name. They're called their decimal values, and they recur. They go they again and again, so we call them recurring decimals. What's it equal to? Does anyone remember? You get your calculator out, and for some reason, it's 15 on 99. Okay? So you're like, but, but why is that? Okay, you can both learn this result. We make you learn it in year seven. But can you explain it? I wonder if the, um, if the cogs are turning in your head yet. Uh, these three here, even though they don't look like it, they're GPs. Hmm, what's going on? Uh, these are geometric progressions. It's, it's actually the sum, the whole thing. How can I make that a little more obvious? Well, let's go after this one. Let me, let me rub this off. Zero point. 1, 5, 1, 5, 1, 5, 1, 5, and so on. If I were to make this into a, we'll try and rewrite it as a geometric progression, an infinite one, because it goes on forever, right? What would the terms be? Hmm. Well, um, the repeating part is the part I'm after, right? So there's 1, 5 there, and there's another one. What are these equal to? If I were to say put it in as a fraction, it might be a little more obvious. Okay? This first 0 0.15, if I made a fraction, it'd be 15 over 100. Is that okay? 15%? Yeah. What's the next one equal to? Just, just that one on its own. 0 0.0015. To get two more zeros, I've got to add them onto the denominator, right? Two more zeros. What about the next one? Well, I just add two more zeros again, right? Two, four, six, and so on, okay? Can you see the GP? Uh, let me make it a little more obvious again. This is 15 over 100 to the power of one, right? The next one is 15 over 100 squared that I added two more zeros. And the last one, well, the last one I've written anyway, is 100 cubed. Okay, now, can we, can we put this together now? What's the first term? That's the first term, right? A is equal to 15 over 100. What's the common ratio? What am I multiplying by to go from term to term? Um, it's getting 100 times smaller, right? So the ratio is 1 over 100, okay? Now these, A and R, they're the only two pieces I need for the limiting sum, aren't they? So I would say, this whole thing, 0 0.15 repeater, that's my, my S, if you like, is equal to A over 1 minus R. Okay, this is just straight substitution, yeah? 15 over 100 divided by 1 minus 1 over 100. Is that okay? There's my A and my R. What happens on the bottom? <clears throat> I've got 15 over 100. Just watch out with your fractions on fractions. 
1 minus 1 over 100 is 99 over 100, right? And you've got a common factor there on the numerator and the denominator, which you can get rid of. And there's our magic number. Hmm. Okay. So, and you can, you can see the place, of course. Uh, let's see. Divide by 3, so 5 over... That's enough, isn't it? No, that's good. Okay. So, there you go. Now, recurring decimals. If you said to me, year 7, oh yes, the reason why this is the recurring decimal is because of geometric position. Of course it wouldn't make sense, right? But now you've got the pieces to make sense of that.